You are now tuned in to the Free Play Media Podcast Network. We are live. Chris Denman, Travis Terrell. We've got a special guest here before we tell you about him. Barrel, beard, and tattoo oil. Travis, how are those elbows? Very unashified, Chris. No ash. That's right. Barrel, beard, and tattoo oil. Great for your skin. Great for your hair. Look them up online. They're made right here in St. Louis, Missouri. Okay, so we alluded to a guest. We have a special. We just did radio. Kind of tired of that. Let's cut loose a little bit. Do the Uncensored podcast. Ben Glebe. He's at Funny Bone all weekend here in St. Louis. He's got to get tickets uh, go see him. It's going to be a fun time. I heard you're very talented in the stand-up arena. I haven't seen your act yet. Well, that's hurtful. Uh, it is. So I feel yeah. like it's very hurtful. Right. Also, I wanted to get off on a good start. <laughs> that's a great start. Yeah. You know, I really like when people don't know at all about what I do. It's yeah. very helpful. Um, also, m- one of the things people like most about my comedy, it's interesting you mentioned it, is I have very ash-free elbows as well. Good! <laughs> we need to hook you up with some barrel beard and tattoo. I'll rub it on those elbows. I mean, they're already ash-free, but I'd like them to stay that way. This time yeah. of year especially. It gets cold. You're mm-hmm. now, you're coming in from New York, but you're an L.A. guy. You're in L.A. at least. 100% true. Look, someone did their research. Let's see, boom. Oh, right. Take yeah. that, Google. That's right. <laughs> Take, yep. What were you doing in New York? I was on the Today Show yes. with Kathy Lee and Hoda. And then uh, I went on a, an, an airplane and uh, got to fly an airplane. Good for you. For a web series that is coming out soon called Comedians on Another Plane. And I was the first guest. And I figured I would wait until we were recording to ask the pilot, who is the host, can I fly? And he's like, uh, sure. You, so you jump back there. <laughs> Well, I was already in the cockpit. I was the okay. co- in the co-pilot seat, but he let me take the controls, and I flew for m- several minutes of flipping airplane. Are you serious? It was this like a- <laughs> I was going to say, is he an improv guy? I was like, like, they worked right now? Like, a homeland security going to kick down our door? Story two days ago. I'll show you the video as soon as we break. Oh, I follow you. I just must not have seen it. No, oh, yeah, it's it's. Uh, I'm a, you follow me now? No. All of yet. a sudden, you know. <laughs> we'll see. All we'll about see. the things I do. Yeah. We'll see how friendly we are with this, and, and, we'll, and we'll work out that way. <laughs> Go see Ben Glee this weekend. Show's not live, by the way. You know? <laughs> yeah, that was your main concern. Damn. Not I mean, the fact that mere days ago you are on a nationally, internationally televised TV show, mm-hmm. and then now you've sauntered into what could be a hospital with very sterile walls. Yeah, it's very sterile. It's extremely sterile, You put right? up a damn poster or yeah. something. <laughs> right. how, how about a record? Act yeah. like a radio station for Anything. a moment. Yeah, can we damn. even, like, yeah, something cheesy you know from, like, know? the Wing Bowl or something, right? Anything Thing would be nice. Yeah. yeah, some like weird cheesy props. I'd like beads hanging on the wall. Oh, I like that. Where it's I, like, are they like, is it a 70s thing? Is it a hippie what's thing? What's happening? Yeah, yeah. Nobody knows. And you know what else is funny? Like I was, you know, I, I'm on, on pretty much every month on Kathy Lee and Hoda and they're very, very famous, really well known. And uh, they watch my stand up. So nice. it's weird that like I'm here <laughs> and you don't. Right. That, I, that's a weird why thing. Why did you say Heil on your microphone? <laughs> what's that about? It's a fair question. Uh, we'll have to get into that a little Welcome to Missouri. Hello. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, so you've walked in here, and that's your chief concern. Our show is called We Are Live and not really live. You've brought a live aspect into We're it with live your Facebook now on my Live. Facebook. Yeah. How, have you, uh, how do you like dealing with Facebook Live? Do you feel I like you get a lot of interaction with that? Oh, I do. I love it. Back at the end of last year, I became the first comedian in history to uh, Facebook live stream an entire headline set. Wow. My entire show in St. Louis here was the first one I actually did. And it got like 330,000 views. So I decided to do it in every city the rest of my tour. And for eight straight cities, I did one set, my Saturday late show, live on Facebook. And each one got three to 400,000 views. It was almost 4 million views for the thing. So That's insane. I love it. I love it. I, I would just do crowd work for that whole show. You know, if you come and see me this weekend, I do my material. And then I mix in a little crowd work. Right. The material's all different than my Showtime special. And nice. Gangster. You won't hear one repeated joke. But then I also like to, that was, those I did 100% crowd work. Just improvising with the people in the audience and so I wouldn't burn any jokes and I could do it city by city. It was really fun. That is, that is, and also you didn't see any of those as well. Yeah. So that was eight different chances. I bet it was I bet it was really good. I bet it was awesome. No, that's all that matters yeah. if you just assume. I assume. Right, right, right. This so we'll guy's my favorite lot. comic, I assume. Yeah. <laughs> as far as I could imagine. So yeah, I was going to say idiot test. You've got the special out from Showtime. Yep. I, I like the... Uh, 
the availability for comics to take things out to special showtime is what yours and I did know that neurotic gangster available I'm, check it out yeah I'm glad you knew it yeah right yeah, yeah. I'm You're aware welcome. of it <laughs> you do specials right that's right like, yeah. somebody I, I just saw on YouTube last night I probably shouldn't even say this but I didn't do it so uh, whatever somebody uploaded my whole special illegally to YouTube oh so fun. you can see it right now until it gets taken down <laughs> If you don't have a Showtime subscription, you can see it. That's I don't awesome. recommend you do that. Yeah, and, and I would look down upon you if you did. What made you go with Showtime? Uh, they're the ones who bought it. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, I've always loved Showtime. You know, Showtime. I feel like is historically the the other than HBO Comedy Hours, which is like you know obviously known as like the gold standard of the year. Showtime really has filled in that gap, and they do so many more these these days. HBO really only, generally speaking, does like Chris Rock level people. Right. Right. So um, Showtime has become the gold standard for like a, spe a special. It's they only do twelve a year mm -hmm. max. Yeah. So it really was like a real honor to be on Showtime, wow. and I'm still on. You know, they're airing it like every week, basically. And that's cool. You know, Netflix would be great to do my next one for. But if Showtime asked, I would do it there mm -hmm. as first priority because they've been very nice to me. Right. They put me on there. They're nice people. Why you? Why you? Why do you want me not to be on Showtime? They're nice. Why are you guys looking at me as <laughs> right. get off of there? No. They're great people. My, I think that video right. should be taken down. My, my, that was going to be my next question. My last name's Netflix. I you didn't know that, I was, Mr. Netflix. Is that my right? Father. Yeah. Oh, that's well, right. That's, I feel, take it. I feel bad. I would love to be there as well. <laughs> also, someone just uploaded most of my special. Not someone. We did it actually. Of the audio of Neurotic Gangsters on Spotify, so you can just listen no to kidding. it. No kidding. I own Spotify, and yet I've not heard your special. You own Spotify as well. Yeah, I own you Spotify. You very connected family. I know, right? <laughs> Spotify, your yet middle name? Modest, modest uh, You're very surroundings. I am. That's who I, mean, I am. Sweet. Sorry, Travis. I love you. And you have a beautiful studio with a great view of a ta <laughs> yes, Taco, Taco Bell. Bell. <laughs> well done. Listen, and of all people, I thought, like, of course, like, I, I'm like, okay, so maybe we should have researched Ben a little better. He's very interactive. I thought he'd maybe be a guy that comes in, gets his plugs in. Okay, have a good one. We should have went to one of the other better studios that we use you in this situation. Studios? We do. Yeah. You relegated me to your right, we, You got studios? relegated, man. I don't know. I, why? Why did we do this? Beth, I'm taking... Uh, so Beth is uh, is running PR for uh, Funny Bone. She kind of suggested, she's like, he's kind of a, a bad studio guy. It's kind of like a C room. Beth is saying that, that she didn't say that. <laughs> I, I, I mean, feel like a lot of things you're saying are straight up lies. Okay, like, that's fair. That's what, what I feel you, like. Travis, I don't think you do save the interview. Studio. I'm seeing the hallways also bare and white. Did you guys just move here? Did you break in here? Are you allowed to be here? We've been here for three years. Do you have a real show? Oh, is hurry, it live? Hurry, hurry, hurry. <laughs> what is happening? I'm just happy that you're Facebook living it, so finally somebody I'm, will hear I'm us. I'm starting to believe your last name's not Netflix. <laughs> At the beginning, you even said your last name, and it wasn't Netflix. <sighs> Travis, save the interview. No, I was it's curious because... Does has the appetite from the HBOs and Showtimes? Have they picked up since now that Netflix has made more of a concerted effort to put more stand-up comedians on their medium? I don't understand the question. What the question is? I guess are you noticing that bigger networks like the Showtimes, who have been exclusive to doing maybe about twelve, thirteen stand-ups, right. is that appetite now? back or is there more of an interest from these major networks to get back into the stand-up game as far know. as considering netflix has really gone out of their way to almost yeah. put out a new comedian or put out a new uh, showtime actor uh, almost every week on netflix i feel like i think they are i think i think showtime's maybe increasing their efforts because show uh netflix now i feel like uh, for, actually from what i've heard they're pretty much not doing specials anymore for anybody that's not like chris rock jerry oh, Seinfeld wow. level okay that's disappointing yeah they are doing a new thing of like short mini specials they did one with like five people nikki yeah. glazer and uh mm -hmm. nate bargates was on it maybe yeah, it was really funny and dion cole so they're doing that but they're doing even short those were half hours and they're doing 15 minute ones so i did submit for one of those because i think it'd be cool just to get a little sure i'll take it where i can get it you know of course and that's the night i use that same opinion sexually right mm. thank you for, mm. for clearing that up Absolutely. oh god <laughs> Oh, you got to clear okay. it up. I want to kind of circle back to your your time on the Today Show mm -hmm. because I've said time again uh, that Hoda and Kathy Lee have like easily one of the top three jobs in America oh, yeah, because fun. they can enjoy as much wine as humanly possible mm -hmm. on national television. Mm -hmm. I, if that was somewhere like available on ND.com, I would sign up for that job today. How fun is that working with them in that type of environment? It's real fun. I mean, you do morning TV or radio, sometimes you go in there and it's a sterile environment right. and you're across from a Taco <laughs> sure. Bell. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you go in yeah. in the morning, 
morning media, and, and they offer you the alcohol <laughs> beverage of your choice, <laughs> and you're drinking with television legends. Uh, so is that uh, how it goes? Do they have like a box period. of wine lined up like on shelves? No, it's not box. It's like classy stuff. And they ask, they are literally emailing me. They're like, "What cocktail would you like tomorrow morning?" That is awesome. And it's ready for me. That is it's problematic. Beer. That is great. Oh, it's you usually have a beer? <laughs> and then I'll just like, and, and Kathleen Hoda, they don't mind if I freely, you know, Instagram story them. And what we were doing a toast one morning, and I said, people say, people wonder if it's real alcohol. I'd like to tell you it's, it's, it's real alcohol. <laughs> and Kathy Lee says, of course it's real. We're not fake people. She's very, uh, she's got a lot of integrity when it comes to her drinking. And I respect that. <laughs> I respect that in a woman very much. That's what I look for in 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 a future wife. I want somebody who is real about her drinking and does not phone that in. Very very interesting points made by Ben Glebe here on We Are Live. Now, so, do you take the approach on idiot test the way that, like, we'll see like Pat say Jack, like when they, they know the answer but they come off smarter than what they usually are. Like, right. so now that you know the format, many times obviously the answers. Do you kind of carry yourself around like, hey, you're you're really stupid, and I know a lot more than you? Yeah, of course, that's really what I do. <laughs> Aren't you getting that vibe? <laughs> um, I, I I really do do it. I also help create all the brain puzzles on Idiot Test. So really, not only do I, I didn't know, know that. Yeah, not only do I know the answers, I'm intimately involved in the creation of every. Oh, that's of the cool. Tests. I think that's important. Yeah, and I don't think I don't know if any game show host has ever done that. Has been involved in the creation. In no. fact, season one, I didn't do that, and they told me that you, I couldn't. They're like, as a game show host, there's like a standards thing you can't. You can't know the content. Like before. you may give it away by like, accident yeah. by knowing. But I was like, right. but I'm knowing it right before anyway. You're briefing right. me on the test. They briefed me just before each time, and and the tests were great season one. But there was just some of them I didn't love, and there were some holes in a couple of them or ways they could have been improved. So what I did to solve it, I just became a producer season two. Now I'm one of the nice. co-executive producers. I'm also the head writer on the show now, as far as the comedic scripts. There you go. And and um and then I improvised most of it. But then I just I just kind of inserted myself into the test because I figured if I'm going to be the one putting my face out there on television, making fun of people aggressively right. for getting tests wrong, <laughs> yeah. right. I better believe 100,000% in them. So I work really hard. I mean, we've got an amazing team of writers that write most of the tests from scratch. Okay. I write some from scratch, but then I take them all and I just try to find holes in them. I try to, and then I, I will suggest art changes, text changes to make them better to a place where I like them. That's okay. fantastic. And then the other two, the showrunners, Craig Brooks and our other EP, Aaron Solomon and I, the three of us will just debate the test for sometimes hours for one test oh, wow. until we come to an agreement and I'm happy with the way they are and they're happy with the way they are and then we we uh, put them on the air and then GSN also is very involved in each test and then they'll kick back notes really? and we all have to agree <laughs> on every intense. single test. That's tough too because if you get that many cooks in the kitchen you can have a lot of pushback and, mm -hmm. and swapping out. I guess you trust the process then. Yeah, luckily you know the network is really cool and they really yeah. care about the quality and they don't give notes for no reason generally speaking. They give notes that generally help and are smart and I get their point and we all get them. So, but we like really take a lot of care to it. So when I go on the air, uh, definitely I'm, I'm cocky about the test because I know for a fact, right. <laughs> yeah, this is good. At least to the extent of my brain can work that, that I believe in them and that they're real. And there's only one correct answer. And so, Plus, it's just funnier if I'm a little bit of a dick to people. So <laughs> that was my next thing. Follow up is how do the contestants generally respond? I would imagine that you won't put certain responses on the air; they're properly edited. But have you ever had a contestant that come in and they're just like, "I don't get this. Why is he got? Why is he being an asshole to us?" I don't. Well, get hopefully, this guy. they've seen the show before right. and they know what they're about to get. But I did have a contestant once who was just like, "You're being mean." I'm like, "Yeah, that's kind of the thing." Here. <laughs> what is happening here? Yeah, because yeah. I never wanted to be a game show host. That was not a career goal of mine. Wouldn't and, think so. Yeah. Yeah. It sort of has the the stigma, even though Johnny Carson started as a game show host, right. and a lot of people have done it. But in recent years, it sort of developed the stigma of being kind of a cheesy thing or whatever. So when I took shot a game at show, Drew what's that? Yeah, <laughs> shot at Shots Drew Carey. Fired. That's yeah. right. Someone should shoot at him. Thank you. No, I I love Drew, but like no. you know, he decided to go into that world. And he right. actually, I think, is one of the ones that helped change the perception of game show hosts. You have Chris Hardwick hosting uh, a thing now too. Yourself, there's right. incredible well, now, people. Now it's Jamie Fox and Snoop Dogg yeah. and yeah. Craig Ferguson and Jane Lynch has become pretty cool to host game shows but when I took it none of them were hosting shows and so I decided I'm not going to host the show in any sort of normal way I'm not going to be at all cheesy ever if possible I they had a, a, a coach a hosting coach they hired for season one the first few weeks of the season to like he'd literally be backstage like smile smile and I'm like no <laughs> I will not smile I fight when I took the job that poor bastard lost his six figure salary I yeah. they were like no thanks GSE ain't got money for hosting coaches hold on one day I was like he's a really nice guy and I'm like Eric you're a good dude but I'm not doing 
doing these things. Yeah. <laughs> and so when I took the job, I just made, I decided myself instantly, I'm only going to host it if I get to do it in a real sardonic, aggressive way. And the right. only inspiration that I took as a host, as a, as a game show host, was the old lady from The Weakest Link. That's who I wanted yeah. to be like. Like, you're the weakest link, bye bye. And I just never smile on the show unless the contestant earns it. If they truly make me laugh or smile, then I'll, then I'll, awesome. I'll give them their props. But I, I want them to come up to me and have it be a gauntlet and a challenge and intimidating because I'm not trying to make friends with the contestant. I'm trying right. to entertain the home audience. And, if I, and it adds a whole other level of, of, of interest when the host has got a weird vibe going on and you have to like – Come up there and like he'll, he'll give you a hard time on the, if you're being stupid. The well, show's called Idiot Test. I right, find right. Holes in people's make it. Brains. it, 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 it there to be friendly. It, you, you. First of all, you have the game plan. You created the game plan, and then you're throwing people that aren't professional performers in line. This oh, it's is almost, definitely stacked to my favor. Oh, for sure. sure. No, I love lights. that. But you see, right. like you don't see that. People don't realize that's the work that goes into something like that. How many years you've been doing stand up? 17 years. 17 years. So you have a 17 year tenured stand up career. Yeah. You do crowd work. You're proud of your crowd work. Yeah. And then you're going to have them come in. That to me is way more interesting than just being like, oh, cool, dude's a t TV host. Like people don't necessarily realize like your entire persona on there planned, executed, and happens because you're a, a performer. And, a, and, and a, again, ran through the ringers, crowds over the United States and everywhere else. Yeah, too. and one of your personal favorites. Oh, me, you, me, yes, 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 my comic, yeah, sorry, I didn't, I didn't catch All that. the posters there, yeah. on the wall. I, 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 yeah, I thought he was going to say, like, somebody I, I pay attention to, sorry, I was like, a, yeah, what was my the, mistake, Ben. What was the initial reaction? You talked about, obviously, being one of the first pioneers, comedian-wise, to be able to step into the game show host role. What was, Cool game show well, host I role. I don't know if I'm a pioneer. Well, well I guess, essentially, I guess you... What was the initial Steve reaction? Harvey, I think, was doing it before yes. me, but, and he's hilarious at it, but I just had my own vibe with it, and I decided to do it my way. What has been the reaction from everybody who, like, other comedians, like, when they see... Jealous, people, like, shitty, you know, everything comedians imagine, like, always that. are. It's, like, it's, consi it's great, consistent work. You get to be who yeah. you want to be. You get to actually work out some of your chops, and I would imagine some of your material as well, so I think it's probably a great opportunity. What are other comedians say now that this seems to be a, a decent path to go for stand-up comics? To oh, yeah, most, I mean, most comics have been very supportive and very nice about it and they will say like damn what a great gig i wish i had a gig where i could do 210 episodes of tv yeah so they're excited i don't work material out on it i'm just always okay. trying to be in the moment and i'm not trying to like develop bits i can go and do rooms in front of 10 people instead <laughs> 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 you know i like to I like to do open mic, right, not yeah. open mic hey, like little book room i LA. wouldn't say our entire audience will be there tonight <laughs> but yeah <laughs> um but yeah i mean these days i think that stigma is reduced it, it it, it still isn't at the place, I don't think, where unless you're those big stars hosting a show, I don't think it's the place where like people are like, oh, man, he's hosting that game show. Let's get him for our late night talk show right. quite yet. But uh, it definitely is something that helps and it's nice to do and I'm happy to be there and, I, and uh, it's really fun to do. I love to host it. Well, yeah, because of that, you get to sit in rooms like this, too. That's the real honor <laughs> of it. That's the real honor of it. You know what I mean? I like to be in a room where I feel like the doctor's going to come out and see me any minute. Right. And you have two, like, possibly, are we together? Aren't they together? What's going on mm. with these guys? Yeah, mm. so you I have to figure that out. I wasn't wondering until you brought that up, mm. so kind, of, kind, of, kind of defensively mm. uh, and yeah, like, insecurely. I mean, hey, bro. And now yeah. I wonder, are you guys a couple? Uh, uh, well, this week, or, well, I mean, what, how's that work? Uh, no, we are not. It's complicated on Facebook, yeah, Facebook. right? I like that. Yeah, I that's like how it that. goes. Well, congrats. Yeah. Congrats, Thank and I want to know you guys know that I support you. That's Thank so you. And if you move to Australia, I'm glad you can get married now. It's yeah. exciting for you. That's next up on the list. That's yeah. beautiful. Head to Australia. That's really so beautiful. So give, uh, give me the crowd work uh, angle here. So I, I love watching comics really get into the crowd. Do you? Does it ever get away from you? What's the What's the breaking point in your set? I mean, because you get people, and I don't know if you bring in any kind of political stuff or anything like that. People don't necessarily get it, and then there comes that point where they're eh, now you're actually being disruptive. But if you're doing crowd work, I assume it's kind of like, eh, we can kind of get away with about whatever because you're going to tamp them down because of your experience as well. Does that make sense? Where's the line for crowd work with you with crowd interaction? I don't find any line. I don't like to have any line. Like I try to be the key for me to crowd work is just to be so in the moment that nothing could throw you. Because That's awesome. You 
are willing to go like I'm willing to go down a path with somebody for a minute. So I prefer that too. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to give them a stock line and move on. I try never to repeat a thing yeah. I've said before. Occasionally it okay, happens, but right. I try really hard to go an extra question deep into people's lives. If someone shouts something out to me, it doesn't happen to me much because I'm so into the crowd. Yeah. I think people are a little bit intimidated to heckle me, but when they do, it's it's totally fine because I'm very comfortable going off off of off the plan and, and seeing where it goes. Well, so it's I, so enjoyable too, because no matter what, even if you have somebody that's really strict on their set and they're going to go through, someone's inevitably going to get drunk and do something stupid. Yeah, for the yeah, bachelorette the, party, it's a nightmare. Oh, mm. man. Yeah, I was going to ask that. that. How, did, how did you yeah. adjust for when that? When I was nice. single, that was even more challenging because I was half very annoyed at the loud drunk bachelorette party, but then half I wanted to like hook up with those people. <laughs> yeah, half I like, to, like e easy, yeah, yeah, easy they're, target. They're, they're like really into it and they're very flirty and sometimes they invite you to come out and drink with them afterwards and it could be a great night. So, yeah. and I've had times, believe me, where I'm like, please shut the hell up. <laughs> and I still will hit on all of you after the show. And they understand that right. Right. through the drunken haze. But now that I have a girlfriend, it's just straight up annoying. And I can be a lot more definitive with telling them to quiet down. <laughs> But I'll, I'll I'll dive in, you know what I mean? I will uh, I will uh, I will I'm not afraid to make fun of the sachets and the penis right. straws. <laughs> well, you don't need a penis necklace and a penis straw. It's like we get it, we get it. You're women you gotta, and you like penises. Was that a, you was, that a know. was that a conscientious decision though, as far as doing the type of crowd work that you do? I, I feel like sometimes for comedians it evolves over time. But was People, that something when you got started that you were like, you know what? I I'm, I feel more comfortable being able to do an off the cuff. Oh, was that just something that, you know, just happened as you continued throughout your career? I knew I always wanted to do it. I loved crowd work comics like Howie Mandel and mm -hmm. Paula Poundstone. I always loved watching it, Jimmy Brogan. And so I always knew I would do it. Um, and it's probably in certain ways really helped my career in some ways really hurt. Interesting. Because I feel like it really shows, you know, if there's ever industry there, people see me do it in my special or whatever. I do crowd work and all these things. And so they, sh they know that I can like host well and I can go well off the cuff, but it's definitely impeded my stand up career as far as climbing up the ranks because like I've got hours of material, right? Yeah. Right. Hours. But years ago, I recently, like about a year ago, taped an episode of Comics Unleashed. But years before that, every comic in the world was doing Comics Unleashed. And I'm like, I'd like to do that show. And the booker said to my m manager at the time, uh, we know he's great at crowd work, but does he have any material? And I had oh, hours wow. of material, and I would do it in every set just because I had a looser structure, and I would right. weave it in and out of improvising with the crowd, and the industry is very lazy, and most executives are very, very lazy and right. don't really pay attention, don't know their craft, and so very often they're like, they can't pick apart what you do and realize your different talents they just overall see i'm not seeing a tight script <laughs> i'm five. so happy to hear you say that i've heard this uh, uh, literally like for selling specials or ideas even pitching tv shows people <laughs> will go you know but crowd work like they'll say it and it's like what like are the audiences laughing like what are we right. doing like that's so uh oh i'm, I'm going more on the on a high wire and putting myself more out right. there, risking more. It's not the jokes I've repeated a thousand times and I'm doing those and killing with those and people don't get it. The industry is very frustrating. The, I think a lot of the bookers and you, you rarely see the bookers sitting in showrooms actually watching stand up. That's insane to me. Bookers and right. whether of, of late night talk shows or of people that decide, or producers that decide who gets to be cast, network executives, they're never in the rooms. Right. Or if they are, they pop in and out quickly. They're mostly heat seekers. They wait for other people to say that they're funny, and they just right. hire them. It's oh, really wow. frustrating. That, that it's is a very lazy industry. God, that, that, that is. That is super. I've, it's very lazy industry. I've, I've seen that and how super talented people will get like, well, you know, maybe just not be the right thing to go that way. And it's But the reasoning isn't ever sound, I don't feel like. So it's... Yeah. I'm glad you're able to share that. I and guess I'll be honest, like I don't hate on laziness. I'm lazy as hell. <laughs> I am I, I I could definitely be getting a lot more done. My work ethic could be better, but at least I'm I'm lazy b while progressing my career right. and, and making and doing what I have to do really well, which is making crowds laugh, doing different stuff out of the box every day and not just on stage or in the game show. I'm doing like elaborate Instagram stories right. almost every day, editing them. I was editing on my in my in the car that on my shit phone takes the way so much here. Time. <laughs> So much time. I'm like a one man corporation. So I'm lazy, but I'm also getting so much done and being right. diligent about my craft and entertaining people. People that are bookers, all they do, all they need to are tasked with doing is watch and find talent. <laughs> right. If you're lazy about that, you're not even doing your one thing well. Right. Like, I'm not doing the eighth thing I'm trying to do well, maybe, and I could be doing better. But do something well. Have a little pride in your work. Right. <laughs> yes. I would like to end it there because that's a definitive thing, but we're not ending it there. So okay. you have a TV show, yep. right? Your game show. You're doing all this stuff. You just did the special. 
special that probably took a little bit of time to get put together. Mm -hmm. Do you pitch? Are you sell, Are you pitching to networks too? Are you trying to spin off other yeah, shows? So like that's where I've been a little lazy. I have a political show that I've been developing that I'd like to take out, but I'm developing it at a turtle's pace and I'm not really moving forward fast enough. I wrote a scripted thing recently that we're pitching as well, but like, you know, I wrote it for Bill Murray to be in it with me, and that's kind of a mistake only because it's very hard to get Bill Murray. Sure. You know, I don't want to buy <laughs> yeah. the show. Like Great Bill idea. Got, We're so. missing one component. One yeah. component. That's a little bit tough. I mean, granted, there are other... We wrote it so that any iconic star could be in it, but we need an iconic star, and those aren't easy to get. Right. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'm writing a book, but that, you know, I wrote a couple chapters of it, and now I'm waiting to see if we can get a book deal from those chapters, and so I'm slow down on that. The book's pretty good, you know what I mean? You know, like Malcolm Gladwell, a very popular author these Boy. days, and... He's brilliant. You know, he definitely comes up with these great insights into humanity and into yeah. societies. But it's like one insight per book, and it's like basically like 200 pages of examples to make one point. Mm -hmm. Right. My book is like 30 Malcolm Gladwell books in one. Each chapter is like a Malcolm Gladwell type theory. That's great. Each in a chapter. And uh, you'd think that one might be pretty easy to sell, but it's all about numbers. Maybe I don't have as high numbers yet as... as People want. Uh, how, how did you develop your discipline in, in that regard? Because I would imagine tr you have some. You've done the pitch process before. You've you've been a writer. You continue to tour. How do you find time to continue to be as creative as you have been? I would imagine that in itself is a practice that you have to develop over time. Yeah, or just smoke weed, and then it really kicks oh. it in a high gear. <laughs> I've been you, trying you to tell the people watch Netflix all day too. <laughs> like, yeah. like I said, Travis, well, I, you got I, I want to say something halfway there. So so go I, on. I, I smoke weed. I just don't watch Netflix all day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Creating my own content instead. <laughs> okay, see, yeah, now that's where you're me you're that's, messing that's, up. I was like, oh man, he's like, why haven't I got a TV sh uh, uh, I'm show? Sitting sold there, yet. just like yeah. right now, all of Kevin Hart's material. Oh, I'm, this is gonna be gold. Mm -hmm. that's Damn he, it, that's what I was doing. People wrong. have seen him, <laughs> so they're, they're they're gonna know. Well, they're seeing him now on your Facebook live feed. Kevin Hart? Yes. Pro yes. Well, are you Kevin Hart? They went to St. Louis to interview with Kevin yeah, Hart. Kevin Hart wanna, and Mr. Netflix. I didn't want to assume all black people are the same person. <laughs> right. So that's yeah. why I didn't realize you were Kevin Hart. Big fan of your work, <laughs> man. You You're a calm, collected guy. <laughs> you, you sat here just still yeah. the whole time. I used to be on... I, I was on Chelsea Lately for seven years, and I was on with Kevin Hart one one week. It shows amazing how sometimes people just pop, and you get that moment that yeah. hopefully you know comes to everybody who deserves it at some point. And I was on the round table with Kevin Hart one week. Uh -huh. Three weeks later, he was guest hosting Chelsea Lately, and I was on the round table, and he was the host. And then three weeks after that, he became the biggest star in comedy. It was pretty insane. That, that is wild too. What was he like? The he had like a, a fifth lead in a Jason Siegel movie or something, right? The uh, well, you can't forget engagement. he was a lead in Soul Plane. So relax. <laughs> so well, there is the that. No, but you see that like it felt like it was overnight, but it wasn't. There was a ton of work that went oh, into yeah, that. Oh yeah, been but, a comic forever, and he yeah. works hard, so he deserves it. He's a good dude, and you know, has created his platform that's giving co opportunities to other comics. Like I just did the Montreal Festival. I did his LOL. Um, tapings. He, did, he has this like LOL right. app coming out, and I did That's one great. of the stand up tapings. So is, that, is that ever frustrating? Like, I always want to say frustrating because one thing I have noticed with comedians that you guys are generally very supportive of each other. Yeah, but, I really think that has changed. We are a pretty supportive community. And that, and that's really good to hear, especially considering because you talk about a guy like Kevin Hart or even yourself who've been doing it for as long as you have. Is there ever a moment where you go, man, I've been, I've been doing the rounds, I've been doing my writing, I've been making the pitches, been, this is your. 10, 11, 12, I, I don't know. Is, what, did that ever come to you at any point, or you just already knew, hey, look, I like Start the direction. Start those middle management jobs. Because oh, like yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would imagine at some point for every Kevin Hart that continues to stick it out and goes on the road for as long as he does, there's that one comedian who was probably on the road as long as he just said, I know. Well, there's probably a thousand for yeah. him, Kevin Hart. You hear people on podcasts talk about it. I think of Greg Fitzsimmons. If he brings someone up that he used to do comedy with, like they talk about him like they died, like that they got mm -hmm. out right, of comedy. Right. Like, yeah, he's like an insurance guy now right. or something. It's kind of funny. I mean, no, that. I've never even for five seconds considered mm. leaving it or, or abandoning the game. Luckily, I've had a fair amount of success. And while I'm not at Kevin Hart level, most years, the year is better than the year before. And that's a pretty good barometer. Right. That's that, huge. That, 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 that stuff's going well. But also, I feel like it's just you don't question it because it's just something that's like, in your bones right when you're a real comedian that's why i get a little not frustrated but i'm a little like annoyed or or like my sent but my like defenses are up a little bit I, I question the integrity or the the reasoning behind a lot of comedians these days that are just everybody's jumping into the game right and, and are using stand-up as a platform as a showcase to right break into acting or i'm like i hate that mm. because to me stand-up is such a 
a, a grind and such a lifestyle and such something that you've wanted to do since you were a kid if you're a true comic that I don't like when like people convince other people to try stand up <laughs> try see if you might like stand up it's not like a it's just it's like not joining a, a health club school. it's not a health yeah. club just try it. But you introductory get, if you're in the area, area, come on in. You have yeah, to do like it. Only do it if you have to do it. Right. So that's see, frustrating. And I don't know how much it will happen with these that that new generation of guys that are just jumping in and it was never a lifelong passion. A lot of them probably will, will be quitting. But in my generation, the ones before, the ones that came up, my class of, of, of comics, very few have ever quit. I can only name maybe two comics that have ever actually quit the game. Everybody is still doing it 15, 20 years later. Even if they haven't had a huge amount of success, wow. you got a hands on they're still they have other jobs. Right. But they're still grinding it out. So it's it's a it's a passion for most people. And those are the comics that I like. People that are doing it as like a stepping stone. I don't it's not my favorite. It's kinda of weird because you get found out real quick if you're not a legit stand up or have legit chops to a degree. Don't you, you think or do you think I don't that- know if I do agree. I think yes, you're, you're probably maybe not, not gonna, to the masses. That's yeah, I, you're probably, maybe if I'm sitting there watching somebody, I'm like this guy because I've been to a ton of shows. What you know, deal with people like that? Right. If you know it, you can mm-hmm. sometimes see through it and tell. But and I agree, they're not going to get to the top levels. They're not going to become Kevin Hart probably. But what is frustrating is because we're such a short attention span society. A lot of these people that aren't comics in their soul and that you know aren't like truly like rawly talented comedians right. but they've put together five to 15 minutes that are funny right just by trial and error and by workshopping and having people people friends help them like punch up their stuff they'll get a lot of work mm. and we'll get some heat and we'll even sometimes make comic to watch lists and you know they aren't that funny off stage they only have that five to 15 minutes interesting and they're never going to have an hour yet they'll be considered a hot comic they might even get montreal new faces and you just know that they're not a comic wow you didn't even invoke youtube in that i thought you were going to go down the like youtube guy trying to people that jump from youtube stardom and try to start doing it too yeah and look if somebody jumps and actually takes it seriously and becomes like a hard-hitting comic like michael yo a friend of mine from chelsea lately he was never a comic he? Mm -hmm. he was never a comic before but like really like had a respect for the craft and like really liked it and wanted to to take it seriously and remember he got booked to open for me in florida at a gig at captain brian's and he specifically like requested open for me because he liked what i do on stage and wanted nice. to learn from me and came out all weekend and, like was every I, I wanted to just enjoy the beach we were on the beach right. and he was like do you mind if i just ask you a thousand questions <laughs> and we, he was like literally like picking apart my process and how i do it and like really trying to learn wow. and he's been hitting the clubs hard for the last four years since then has become a real draw but also takes it very seriously yeah that i have respect for that's awesome i don't think he'll ever stop doing stand-up but people that just want to do it as a stepping stone it bothers me and i wish that they would stop (laughs) (laughs) i don't need that kind of competition (laughs) yeah (laughs) don't take my from a bunch of fake ass motherfuckers you know what i'm saying uh montreal comedy festival i've heard through a very uh a trusted source that he requested to be paid in American money and has been blackballed since after he Michael performed Young? there. No, 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 no. Ian Bag said oh. <laughs> he said they he tried to get uh, he tried to have them pay them. Do they pay you in Canadian money? I don't remember. What I thought that was. The, I, got I was like <laughs> Ian. It sounds like you were being a dick. <laughs> like, I, that doesn't even make any sense to me because just ask for more money in Canadian. Any bank will do the exchange for you. <laughs> Just get the amount that you're happy with. What does he hate? The currency? It's a, it's a beautiful dollar over there. Right? You got holograms and plastic windows in the money. You can look through it. It's like a right. beautiful. You can connect with fall in love through a bill. Yes. That's that's a weird request. Yeah. Ian sure. Bag was a guest on a celebrity episode of Idiot Test recently. Yeah. A lot of comics have been on. It's been you really were with, he was Tiffany on with, Haddish uh, did it. He was with uh, Brad Williams. He was on the ep- was he on the episode with Brad? Yeah, mm-hmm. it was him and it was Ian and Lachlan Peterson against Brad Williams and Adam Ray. Yeah. Brad Williams, one. Adam Ray, they're killing it too. They're working killing hard. Killing it. Yeah. Their podcast amazing about last night. Yeah, very fun. Um, almost as good as my podcast last week on Earth that can I, be subscribed to. I was nice. going to ask about that. How's the podcast going? Have you? It's good. I've been so busy lately, and I feel like to There's some been a break, degree, I've, right? I've been on a break. I feel like I've a little bit let my listeners down uh, because I've been so busy and. My podcast is political. I talk about current events and things going on in the world, and it's been so much to process. I don't want to put out junky episodes. It's tough, man, and especially with your touring, and then you record, all, writing all these other things. And just it's so much to consume that the last bunch of episodes, while I'm still proud of them, it's mostly just me ranting about Trump instead of covering a lot of stories, and so right. I wanted to make time to do it right when I come back. I have a few episodes in the can that I'm ready that are like cool interviews. Like I just did a whole, a whole interview with General Wesley Clark. 
Wow. Former NATO oh, allied wow. Supreme Commander and presidential Jeez. candidate. Me and him yeah. in front of a sold out crowd. I'm going to release that soon. Okay, now that that's going to be How, entertaining. I traveled that's to awesome. Israel. What a great gift. It was a real good one. I traveled to Israel and I uh, interviewed this amazing Israeli tour guide about the whole Israeli Palestinian conflict. And then I traveled into the Palestinian territories, into the occupied territories, and interviewed our Palestinian tour guide and balancing those two back together. So soon that, as they put that these together. These are amazing projects. So I'm going to come back strong. See, I, I'm at 190. 99 episodes already in the can. Okay. The next one's 200. So part of why I've waited for the, like five months. To <laughs> I was going to say, I, would, I, I almost didn't want to bring it up because I didn't know if you know. stopped it. I'm <laughs> not ever going to stop it, but yeah, I really right. do feel bad that I haven't been doing consistently. And I, I would like, and I will soon come back consistently. I just haven't found it in my, in my, in my routine yet to get it back. And I want the 200th episode to be really special. So I'm like holding off on it, That's but awesome, but it, I'm going to come back strong pretty soon. And hopefully Kevin Smith will help me, uh, Push it out there and 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 help me apologize to my <laughs> listeners, but I don't want to put out junk. Yeah, so. no, that's just make the podcast round. You'll be just yeah, as popular as ever. True, hopefully, hopefully right? people just didn't unsubscribe. Hopefully they they are okay with just you know not every show is gonna. You know, I'll be like Will and Grace. I'll come back. Oh, there you go. Take, I'm just take seven years well, off. You're, this is our 200th episode today. We made it is that around true? you. Yeah, yeah. Really? We wanted to have you on for our 200th. That's a lie, right? That's that a lie. Is a definitely a fake news. That's I fake know. news. I apologize. Listen, you guys are the best show <laughs> I've ever seen. Okay? I love when the face goes. You, you look like the person when you yeah. do the impression. Yeah. That was good. That was really show good. Show him your Mark Wahlberg. Show him Chris. No, show him show the Mark Wahlberg. Do it. What's that? Do you want? I don't know what you're going. What, what's happening? I don't know. Like, I don't, what, we don't need to do a Mark Wahlberg oh. in front of. In front I will of him, do yeah. my favorite two-word impression. I will do Johnny Drama from Entourage. Oh, give it up. Sorry, bro. <laughs> That is good. That's a good one. That is so, good. Yeah, that, that was dead off. That's all he said on that show, right? Sorry, bro. Sorry, bro. I'm here with my boy, I'm here with my boy Johnny Drama. Let's, let's make it happen. Yeah, Big sorry, bleep. bro. <laughs> it's Go see him at Funny Bone this yeah, weekend. Sorry, bro. This is fantastic. When's the podcast coming back? <sighs> soon. All right. God, that's all good right. enough. I thought we'd get breaking weeks. news. All the right. next few weeks, very soon. Dude, thank you so much for coming in. My thank pleasure. So Thanks for having me, guys. Absolutely. Ben Glebe, go see him, follow him everywhere. And most importantly, just Funny Bone. You'll see him in person. You'll appreciate everything. Watch the TV show. At Ben Glebe on all social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook especially. Love it. See you later, man. Thank you, guys. <laughs>